Are you ever on Deal or, Deal or No Deal? Which, by the way, I grew up watching. It's Am like, I ever on it? Okay, so, okay, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Respectfully. Were you facing the television when you were watching it? <laughs> no. No. no my, 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 my dad wouldn't let me watch it, watch it. You appeared so professional, and I You know, you have now those, some of those not. girls have been in your house. Most, I've been inside some of them. Oh. Consensual. When, okay. Yes, consensual. Uh, <laughs> when you were with a Deal or No Deal model. Okay. When you were with a deal or no deal model, they can't stop saying your name. No. Howie. But if you Howie, got him, do you Howie. do you say to them, "Open your case." <laughs> no, he puts you their know number. You wanted in. to say that so much. He puts... He's like, "Can't, I'll get fired." But if I did, that's what I would say. <laughs> number fourteen. Are are you ever watching? The, you are. You, have you mastered the show? Like, have you? Are you playing while you're hosting? There's no. Well, then you in didn't your really head. watch. In your head. There's what? no you fucking tell, game. Just like I can't rebuttal <laughs> your mental health, you can't tell me that I didn't watch Deal or No, no Deal. No, no, but this there's no like game. F- what do you mean mastered it? There's no fucking game. <laughs> you guess there's no trivia, there's no skill, there's nothing to the game. I, I you disagree. Just, I disagree. You have to well, work. Well, then, Logan, you I, look a lot brighter than no, you actually hey, are. No, hey, let me back I don't think I look bright here. at all. There's I don't this, think... Hey, there's decision making involved that takes a strategic angle. No, it's just how greedy are you? There's no... No, there's statistics. Can I tell you? Let me tell you. There's no stats. Let me tell you how it plays. Okay. There were 26 amounts of money, right? From one penny all the way to one million dollars, because of this movie that you may you probably didn't see because you're all too young. There was a, a thing called Quiz Show. Do you know about Quiz Show? No. It was the biggest debacle of game shows in the '60s, where somebody cheated on the sixty-four thousand dollar question. Why are you laughing? He was choking. You're like you're like you guys are probably too young to know this. And you said the name, and Mike goes, "I know that movie." <laughs> no, that it was actually the face of I didn't know it, unfortunately. Okay, now I feel so uncultured. so the point is that w- there is something when you do game shows called standards and practices, and they have to make sure, especially when somebody's oh, paying for a million yeah. dollars, that there is no cheating and nothing to do. S&P. So we, the, we hired that we the, they hired a third party has nothing to do with our production company, has nothing to do with NBC, and they would pack the cases. So none of the girls knew what number was in their case, what amount was in their case. Nobody in the studio know what knew what number was in their case, what amount was in their case. Nobody knew. There's no skill. In fact, if when they were walking to stage, if one of the women tripped and fell and the case hit the floor and one of the things unlatched, even if you couldn't see the number, Reshuffle. we were we were shut down for another hour where they would take it into another room and do it. Wow. Okay, yeah. okay, so I actually rescind my comment. I, I was... I'm, what do you I'm, think? I want to hear what you think the strategy was. I, w- I would think the strategy is knowing when to walk away. And I guess my That's question... That's life. Yeah, but my question was rooted in, have you ever in your head been like, wow, this person's a fucking greedy... Idiot. Oh, yeah, Not sure. a greedy idiot, but but uh, it made me mad. I got. I'll tell you the story of the of the game. When 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 they asked me to do a game show, and that was in two thousand and five. I was on the uh, on the cusp of uh, quitting the business, and and because I started in in the seventies, and I had uh, really I, I had really quick success and really big success. I was playing you know uh, theaters and and uh, arenas with ten thousand and fifteen thousand people by two thousand and four. I was getting booked in clubs that had like 28 people showing up. And I was, uh, I had done a series, you know, I started out with Denzel Washington on St. Elsewhere. And then, and then in, in 2004, I was sitting on folding chairs in, in casting offices going for like five lines and under. And I just said, I can't get kicked in the nuts anymore. I just can't do this. And I, you know, I'll find other ways. I love business. And I, I'm just going to leave. And then I got a call from my manager that said, hey, there's a game show they want. And I went, fuck you. And I hung up the phone because in 2004, you, you got to put your headspace back there. But in 2004, not one comedian had ever done a game show. And when your currency is comedy and irony, the game show host host was the punchline you didn't want it just like movie stars didn't want to do tv Mm. people on tv didn't want to do commercials Mm. and nobody wanted to do game shows Mm. just a game show host so he calls me back and he goes listen they've never done this before nbc is going to devote five nights of prime time to this and i went fuck you even more if this is the nail in the coffin of my career i'm going to be humiliated by every other comedian by every other person and this is more exposure this is not a this is a deal breaker goodbye and then he called me back one more time and he goes, can the guy just pitch you the idea? This is a huge hit all over the world. America is the last place that, it, that it's going to air. And we can't do it without you, they're saying. 
So I go, listen, I'm sitting at fucking Jerry's Deli in the Valley. Cool. And I said, if the guy wants to come, and from a, a company called Endemol, this guy Rob Smith shows up with that. I showed you that art card. It looked like a, you know, a, an after-school project done by the a one, seven-year-old. The one in your office yeah. that said, don't take this card that you have. That's Carson's the, uh, last uh, cue card. Yeah, he said, don't take this card on it. Well, you say don't, I do. All right. That's the way I work. Sorry. But anyway, he, he showed me the game, and he, he moved my... I said, I'm not going to a meeting, but if he wants to go show me it, I'll, I'll listen. Mm. So I, he puts down this card. He moved my soup. He says, pick, a, pick one of these things, and he had written amounts. You know, I'm trying to pick the one that says a million. I picked the one that says 50,000. He says, now open six more. We'll turn them over. Oh, you turn. played. But horribly. Like, it didn't matter. There's nothing at stake. And he goes, we can't do this without you. And I went home and I told my wife, you know, she goes, are you going to do it? I went, no. And then she said, get the fuck out of the house. You got to do it because I'm mental. And I was driving her nuts. And, and uh, so I said, okay. And they said, thank God, this is a Friday. We couldn't do it without you. And I said, when do you tape? And they said, Monday. <laughs> and I said, well, don't you need a set? They said, it's built. And I said, well, don't you need 26 models? They're all hired. So how far down the fucking list was I? How many people? You <laughs> were last have, choice. I mean, <laughs> they said, we need you because they didn't have anyone can't else. Can't do it without me. That's why they can't do it without me because everybody else. <laughs> the last no. human. Wow, this is a great story. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So I say, I'll do it. And now this is a Friday. So they say, and so then I call and I say, this, I'm, you know, I'm really scared. There's no game here. There's no strategy. How, how do we do an hour of me going, pick a number, all right, open the case? You know, and that's all I had to do. So I said, can I hire some of my friends, some of my comedians, and maybe they can write? Mm. Because the last comedian that ever did a game show before that, a specific comedian, was Groucho Marx. He did You Bet Your Life. I think Leno's doing it again now. Okay. But You Bet Your Life. That's, and then no comedians ever did it. So anyway, uh, I hired a couple. Of, they let me hire a couple of comedy writers. And, and I said, oh, you know what? I'm going to have five hours on network TV when do you get this chance? What kind of exposure? I'm going to do some funny things about cases and girls and things. So we wrote all this comedy. Monday morning comes. I get on the set. And they go, ladies and gentlemen, Howie Mandel, welcome to Deal or No Deal. And I look at, I, I walk out and I, you know, the crowd's going crazy. And there's 12 cameras around. And I introduce the very first uh, contestant. And her name is Karen Van, who I also have a picture of here. I did 500 episodes. And I remember this like it's yesterday. And I'm standing there looking at this woman like I'm looking at you now. And I said, tell me about yourself, Karen. And she says, you know, I have three children. I'm a single mother. I've never had health insurance. Um, I've never owned a home. I'm always going from place to place. I live from paycheck to paycheck. So I said, and she lives someplace in, in middle America and in, in the Midwest. Mm. So it wasn't LA or New York. So, you know, $10,000 would probably change her life. Mm. That would buy her health insurance. It would be a down payment on a home. Mm -hmm. It would be, and remember this is 2004. So she plays, she picks a case. She opens the first couple of cases and the first uh, offer comes in from the banker and it's, it's like 25 or $30,000. And, and I just started playing it and I go, Karen, the banker is offering you uh, $30,000. And she doesn't, not even a second. I couldn't even get the word deal or, <laughs> it was deal or, she goes, no deal. <laughs> and I, that's the face I made, the face that you're making. And I go, oh my God, this is real. This is, this woman just turned down $30,000. I don't think she's ever seen $30,000. I don't think she has 30, oh. you know, that she has access to that kind of money. And it was just, it, it started bothering me. And I noticed that, and you probably notice it, if you have uh, on, a, on a set, you, when somebody isn't in this business, there's a glare that goes over somebody and they go, they, they act like they aren't there. There was all these cameras and all these lights. And I felt like whenever I did something kind of amusing, she would be like throwing, and she was just having fun in yeah. the moment. And I thought, she's not going anywhere. She just wants to stay here. She's not listening <laughs> to any fucking thing. She's not so, paying attention. Not paying attention. So the next offer, I changed my cadence because I said, fuck it. I'm not going to do any jokes. I don't want to. I'll die if I'm responsible for this woman <laughs> not leaving. And being able to feed her kids. In a better position yeah. than she came yeah. with. And I don't want to think that it's because I distracted her with my silliness or, or whatever. So I started talking to her like I talked to Alex when he was five years old. And the next offer, I went, Karen, the offer is 50000 that's $50,000 cash. Karen, how long does it take you to make 50? And I started doing it, and they were flashing me on the camera. Like, you can't push somebody. It's standards and practices. You can't make somebody. But I'm going, $50,000 is guaranteed, or you can open up cases and you have a chance at a million, but you it's a chance. It. This is a guarantee. And she went, 
no deal again. And I just started, my, what was happening is my heart was breaking because I'm seeing these people make decisions that I would never personally make, you know? And it was really hard for me. I will tell you that uh, Karen ended up with $5,000 at the end of the game. And when we did a recap on Karen, you know, to see what she had done with her $5,000. No, not math. She got okay. her tits done. Oh. But the thing is, so... <laughs> and now she's holding suitcase 14. Yes. <laughs> but, but the truth is, I was so embarrassed because I did no comedy. I didn't do anything funny. I didn't play a character. I didn't have a script. I just went out there and just tried to make sure that people would win. I was so fucking embarrassed. I hopped on a plane because it was going to air the next week. I hopped on a plane. I went out to the Caribbean where I was in Tortola and, and stayed at a place that didn't have TVs. I didn't want to be around. I didn't even want cell service so that people could text me. And the show started airing on that following Monday. And I got a call from Rob Smith, the guy that sat, and he goes, you're not gonna believe this, this went through the roof. I went, what the fuck are you talking? I was waiting to be humiliated mm, because I mm. did nothing. He called me the next day, he goes, it's even bigger. He calls me the next day, it was bigger. On Friday, we had 100, by Friday, 100 million viewers. Oh it was the God. biggest game show in the history of game shows since Millionaire. I landed back in Miami, I got off the plane, the first person that looked at me went, deal or no, and I had a, cash, a catchphrase. It has been the biggest, the success of my life with all the things that I've done. But not only that, right away, because I changed, this kind of changed. The next thing, Fox wanted to follow in the footsteps. So they hired Jeff Foxworthy to do Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? They've never hired comedians before. Then they, ha they hired Bob Saget to do One Versus a Hundred. Then they hired, you know, eventually like uh, Steve Harvey to do Family, Family Feud. Feud. Every, every, if you look at every game show now, they only hire comedians. Price is and, right. And I was, yeah. Drew Carey, yeah. I was the very first one.